do you think? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Willie's Chapel. It's so good to see you all here this morning. If you'll all stand and join me, we'll sing Jesus, Thank You. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all the things you do. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I can hardly count the times your grace has pulled me So that's why the extra slide is in there. All right. Has anybody had a birthday since last Sunday? Anniversaries? Has anybody had an anniversary since last Sunday? <laughs> How many years? Two thousand one hundred ninety days. <laughs> they got married my senior year of high school, so now that seems like forever ago. <laughs> Six years. <laughs> All right, now on to our announcements, our pantry items for November, our Christmas cheer items, as well as toys and socks of all sizes. 
And then our Jobs for Children's <coughs> Church, and that's for ages six and younger. And then tonight, our evening service will be at 6 o'clock with the Reverend Tom McMahon. Then Wednesday night, Bible study at 7, followed by choir practice at 8. Please come out and join us for that. And then next Sunday, November 10th, we will have a UMO presentation during our morning worship service at 11. And then our evening service will be at 6 with Michael Author. Sunday, November 17th, our morning service at 11 will be with the Reverend David and Don Smith. And then Michael Author will be bringing our evening service on that Sunday as well. And then every Friday night in November, we have our Layman's League sponsored turkey shoot. And meals will be provided by the Women's Auxiliary at 6 o'clock. So come out, have some food and fellowship, and then stay for our turkey shoot beginning at 7. And then please be sure to pick up an announcement sheet on your way out so you have the list of all of our worship opportunities. Are there any other announcements? Yes, the uh, University of Mount Olive envelopes that I gave out. Please have them back by the 17th of November. All right, so your University of Mount Olive um, envelopes with money in it, bring it back to Miss C by November 17th. <laughs> or Maxine, either one of them. Yes. We had a really good time at the Women's Auxiliary Tea Party yesterday. That's very nice. Are there any other announcements? Oh, I got a few. Oh. <laughs> I do want to appreciate and give thanks to everybody that did show up Friday night for the women's meal and for the turkey shoot. We had a lot of new faces at the turkey shoot. That was really a blessing to us. Um, did an outstanding job. We had 14 rounds we shot at, which is very good this time of the year. We have four more to go. Keep drumming up the business because this, all these monies that we're collecting will be helping for outreach during the Christmas season to different families and whatever. Um, also, I appreciate the women with the tea. I've heard a lot of great comments about that. One thing I want to hit on the negative side, um, at Homecoming and this past week, there was a group text sent out for help needed to set up for homecoming services and to help clean out the secretary's office. It's terrible when your people are quit doing God's work. We need you to come out and do these things when we're, you're asked to be doing them. It just can't be done by a couple of people each time. It's your church. It's God's business. And we need to address it and not shy him just for coming to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. It was very disappointing both of those times. And we've got a big event coming up decorating the sanctuary and the fellowship hall and whatever on the last Friday night of the turkey shoots. It'd be a blessing if we had more people than we needed to help do those jobs that night. I agree. And that wasn't the devil. That was God sent because I've been praying about it for quite a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> I have a comment to have about the turkey shoots. Um, one way to invite people is when you see it pop up on the Facebook page of the church, share it. Yes. Send it out. Absolutely. I think it makes a difference in the attendance. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to put a bug in somebody's ear, too, about it. I appreciate Caitlin and Hunter for bringing all their crowd. <laughs> they better come back another night. <laughs> or two or three. I know he's got to work one weekend, but we'll give him slack there. But uh, Maybe. I'm looking for you. I, I know where you live now. <laughs> well, you haven't moved yet, so I, I, I got your number. <laughs> all right. Are there any others? I do have two things to read up here. The first one is, the family of Richard Allen Jones acknowledges with grateful appreci appreciation your kind expression of sympathy. It says, Dear Willie's Chapel, we are touched by the donation you gave us to help with funeral expenses. It's been an incredibly difficult time, and having your help is so appreciated. Sincerely, the family of Richard Allen Jones. And then we have a letter from Cragmont that says, Hello, Willie's Chapel, Original Free Will Baptist Church. On behalf of everyone at Cragmont, I want to extend our heartfelt gratitude for your generous gift during this time of critical need. And if you recall from our business meeting, we did send them $15,000. Um, it says, in the wake of Hurricane Helene's devastation, our camp has faced unprecedented challenges and opportunity, and your support has been a true blessing. Your gift that have been a source of spiritual renewal for so many is helping us rebuild and restore the grounds while offering countless resources to our hurting community. 
We are deeply grateful for your partnership in this mission and for standing with us in this time of uncertainty. As we continue this journey of restoration, we are reminded of God's promise in Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Your faith and generosity reflect God's strength and provision, and we are filled with hope for the future because of supporters like you. Thank you again for your compassion and commitment to Cragmont. With your help, we can continue to make a difference and bring hope to many. With gratitude, Matthew Daughtry Grubbs, the Executive Director of Cragmont Assembly. So, and both of these are up here if anybody would like to see those. There are no other announcements. If everyone can I else... add one thing? Now? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. It, it just popped in my mind. I saw on Facebook where there was a call for Christians to pray tomorrow night at 6 o'clock for our election on Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. And Hannah, I got one more. <laughs> of course, this he is did. a good one. Ashton had shared with us, Ashton Jones, um, this past week that Jones County, along with other areas, is providing a toy drive for the Western North Carolina families that were devastated. And um, he gave us, I've got a flyer on the back. But I think it's December the 20th is the last time that they want to collect before they take them out there. If you have any toys or anything of that nature. This will be over and above what we already do for our free outreach programs. Mm -hmm. But please bring them because it is going to be a tough time for those families. They are still, if, you, if you're keeping up with that area, some people have nothing. It's not just some people, it's a lot of people. So if we can bring those toys or heck, coats, sweaters, um, what else is it? Hoodies and all that. Any of that I think it would Socks. just be well appreciated. Socks or anything just to help out that area this year. And we'll just collect them here and I'll get with Ashton and he'll help us be the conduit back to the site. Sounds good. All right, if you'll all stand and join me in turning your green hymn books to page 283, we'll sing There Is a Name I Love to Hear. time in our service. Are there any names that need to be mentioned at this time? Yes, Traveling graces for Lark. She's going to go back and forth uh, a couple times this week from church, from church, from uh, home, back to school, and then back again. So All right. Traveling travel. graces for Lark. Yes, sir. Continue to lift up my friend, Charlie Wayne Wood. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Kelly. Sydney's granddad. Uh, please continue to 
Traveling graces for Elizabeth and Peter. Yes, ma'am. Miss Ruth. Yes, continue to keep Larry in prayer. He did go see the doctor. Um, they have suggested that he have the transplant for his eye. Um, also, um, they will do the cataract surgery at the same time. We have opted to put it out until January since we are getting ready to move. So um, he would not be able to help, and I would not be happy. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. She says she's still ready to start driving. I'm sure. Mr. Bryan. I appreciate all the prayers for me. Uh, had a little stroke on uh, Wednesday. Kind of resolved by Thursday, and I just looked up the Lord because he healed me from that. I'm 90% of what I was. But Wednesday, I lost half of my vision in both eyes. So. God's good. All the time. All the time. Yes, ma'am. Prayers for Whitty. He has a shoulder that's giving him a lot of problems. Yes, ma'am. Prayers for Mr. Whitty. Yes, ma'am. Miss Michelle Sims. Miss Michelle Sims. Continue to remember the congregation at Sandy Plain along with their pastor, Crandall Fountain. He still is in the hospital, and they're hoping he'll come home tomorrow, but that is not a given. So both the congregation and himself. All right, yes, sir. Any other? If not, raise your hands for a second, please. Yeah. And Mr. Bitt. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we come to you again just humbly as we know how, lifting up our petitions of prayer. But we also have lifted up some praises, too, that we're so thankful your will be done in each and every one of these situations. Lead, guide, guard, and direct us. And as Gracie mentioned, let's do be much in prayer tomorrow night around 6 o'clock that your will be done in this election. Hopefully everyone that's registered will vote and the outcome will be in your will and not ours. Lead God, guard, and direct us through the remainder of this service. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, if you'll stand and join me once again and turn back in your green hymn books to page 363. We'll sing The Lily of the Valley.
is now time for our tithes and offerings. Would our ushers please come forward? Mr. Jerry, would you please bless our offering? Lord, we come here today. Lord, we ask that you bless this church. Bless the people. Bless the community. Lord, we ask for your gifts. And Lord, we ask that you bless the offerings, the gifts, and the tithes that we bring. Lord, we ask that you use them for the trouble of thy words and spread of thy gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen.
Hey, Annie. Yeah? I just finished reading <laughs> Brian Taylor's best new, new bestseller. You want to borrow it? Uh, no thanks. I'm in the middle of something. Well, this is better. Um, I, I doubt it. Why? What are you reading? Uh, well, you know what? Um, if I told you I was reading this year's number one best-selling book, what would you say? Oh, yeah? What is it? Well, in fact, what if I told you I was reading the number one best-selling book of all time? Would you read it? All right, quit baiting me. What is it? <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, uh, what would you say if I told you this book has been the all-time bestseller ever since the printing press was invented by Henry Guttenberg in 1455 A.D., um, you know, to print it. Well, I wouldn't say anything since someone won't tell me what they're talking about. You know what? It's a superb collection of writings written over a 1,500-year period on three continents captured by 40 word, world-renowned writers from all walks of life, including kings, peasants, uh, generals, doctors, scholars, uh, prime ministers, even a tax collector. And they wrote it in the desert, in dungeons, in palaces, while traveling, and one wrote it from an island. Okay, this is obviously 20 questions. What style of writing is this? Uh, it's a perfect blend of history, law, poetry, um, exposition, allegory, uh, prophecy, um, biography, correspondence, uh, diaries, and apocalyptic writing. But all throughout it, it keeps a consistent theme. I'm proud of you for reading that whole thing. That was <laughs> Are you, <laughs> you did that. Are you going to tell me what it is all about or not? Uh, well, you know what? It talks about the key to perfect relationships and the meaning of life. Um, how to live forever, finding complete happiness, you know, that sort of thing. How come I've never heard of it? Is this thing written in English? Uh, of course it is. In fact, it's been translated into more languages and read in more countries than any other book in history. Damn, this better be good, because if you're talking about a dictionary, I'm going to... Uh, no, no, no. In fact, did you know that every day, thousands of copies are smuggled into communist countries where the book is illegal and people have to read it secretly at night, or else they'll be thrown in jail, or worse. Hmm. Will you just tell me what it is? Are you interested, Skip? Of course I'm interested. All right, so, because there are organizations dedicated to giving every person in this country who wants one a copy of this book for free. For free? <laughs> it can't be any good if it's for free. <laughs> who would you say the author was? God. What? God's the inspiration behind it. Are you talking about the Bible? Yep. Oh, goodbye. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 listen. So, it's the story of God's redemption of mankind from the paradise lost in Genesis to the paradise regained in Revelation. And, what's more, it's a non-fiction. Hmm. I don't think this is my kind of book. It sounds boring. Something about Bible just doesn't do it for me. Uh, okay, wait. Um, are you impressed by those credentials? Um, you read a book because uh, the TV week recommended it you know what that's not that's not cool uh, you know what? you're right you know what I'm gonna take you up on this exposition composition holy definition and I'm going to read a Bible because it is the greatest story ever told yeah. right so we read all these books and these things they say that are bestsellers and stuff like that but you know what sometimes you can sell hot garbage if you put it in a nice pink bag, right? But since I've been reading the Bible, I've never read greater stories. Because every one of these, even if I read James Bond, James Bond is great, one of my favorite movies and favorite books, but I can never relate to it. Because I can never get anything past 
<laughs> I don't have any James Bond skills over here, but everything I get in the Bible, I can use with everywhere in my life. I don't have to have a secret Dakota ring or a fancy Aston Martin to drive around. I could have a wheelbarrow and my dog Poppy and go around the street and still get something from the Bible. I may end up that way if I keep making somebody mad. <laughs> so remember, it's the it's the best selling book for a reason. And if and if they don't want it in a communist country, it's got to be good, right? Because communism never sleeps. Remember that. <laughs> Right, so enough for future <laughs> reference, right? <laughs> so, with that being said, with that being said, we'll continue praying about the election, and, <laughs> and, and, and we're gonna let you guys go back back to Sunday school, to children's church, and then we know that this lady is gonna bring us a nice message. I'll take I'll take the. I did set that one up. Oh, oh y'all quit. Good Lord. Oh my. That was wonderful. I love this little story, didn't y'all? That was good. I was on to go to the back myself. <laughs> we um I contemplated whether to say this to start off with because uh, I told this to the ladies yesterday. Um, but you men in here, I mean some of y'all might might do this, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna say it tell it anyway so here we go y'all know what it is don't you he's sitting on the edge of his chair <laughs> are you fixing to leave <laughs> well I don't know which one of y'all buy this turkey it's Thanksgiving and I don't speak anymore till whenever he sees so um <laughs> never probably after today but um I forgot what I was going to say. Right, okay. So, I don't know, it's turkey month. You know, you're going to buy a turkey. Somebody is in your household. So, I wanted to share you my experience a couple of years ago uh, because I hadn't ever forgot it of my turkey going, my husband used to buy the turkey. He didn't think I could pick out one, so that was okay. So I was going to get it that year. So I went to the grocery store, Food Line in LaGrange, and I was looking at the turkeys, you know, they're all in the bag, you know, in the, in the freezer. And um, I was just looking at them, and it didn't look like it was big enough, so the, this young uh, guy from the stock room came out, and he walked over there to me. <laughs> and um, I... He said, are you looking for a turkey? I said, yes, I am. I said, uh, do these turkeys get any, get any bigger uh, the lower, you you know, when you go on down there and dig in there? He said, no, ma'am, these turkeys are dead. <laughs> I said, <laughs> My face turned red. He went back to the stock room, and I didn't buy no turkey, <laughs> no nothing. I headed out of food line, and I said, that's my last, what do you think? <laughs> that's my last episode with the turkey. But uh, So don't ask them. If you go looking, boys and men or whoever, if they get bigger, the lower they get. <laughs> and if he don't say anything, then you just tell them they're dead because he don't know no better, you know. Okay. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Okay. I just had to share that. I shared that yesterday, and uh, and we had a wonderful time. If you missed it, we won't invite you to come. It was put on by the uh, Women's Auxiliary, and uh, they were just trying to uh, inv invite all the women. So you see what the Women's Auxiliary does. So uh, if you're ever free on uh, 
Sunday nights. Once a month, uh, please come. You'll enjoy it. Uh, it, it it's, it's really a, a, a great organization, especially in the Free Will Baptist, because y'all, they do a lot. They do a lot. All right. Okay. I'm going to open with just a little, a little different way uh, today. Uh, I'm just going to share. I don't normally share uh, personal things of mine because y'all wouldn't want to hear them but uh, uh this this morning I'm gonna kind of share some personal things um you know if there's one thing that I've I've come to realize and you you probably have to realize is that life passes quickly can I get amen? amen it just caught up with me I mean you know it just catches up with you but uh, being able to uh, live life to the fullest, y'all, is a privilege and, a pre- and is precious. But in the same, uh, the same precious life we have is also, listen, unpredictable and fragile. Don't take nothing but a telephone call, does it? can change your whole life. Uh, an ep- something going on in your life or, or, or whatever that is. And I know what now, this is the personal part. And don't y'all tell it because I know y'all told it because don't nobody else know this but y'all. Oh, God, and it's on our face, whatever that is. I don't care. (laughs) But listen, I got here. I I wrote this just this morning. I put, I know what it's like to start over again. And I know you do too. There's times that you just got to turn the page or turn, you know, get out of that chapter and turn the page and go on. Uh, it's just time to start over again. Uh, I know uh, what it's like to uh, be alone. I haven't experienced that that much in my lifetime, but I have in the last year. I'm not lonely, but it's just being alone because uh, I got God with me or Jesus with me, and I'm not. I'm never alone. I always have someone to talk to, Victor. And, and, and it gets good advice. I get good advice that, that way. But let's go ahead. Uh, I've had the joy of having a wonderful job all our years that we worked together uh, in doing den, uh, dental, dental work and working for the doctors was, was a blessing. Now, my Chick-fil-A job is good, but that's another whole story, and I won't talk about it today. So, And I know what it is to be unemployed. Anybody in here? And uh, I have celebrated life. I've had a good life. And, uh, but there has been times that I just want to give up, quit, I've had enough. Got to move on, you know. I got to do something different. And I know, tell me I'm right, all y'all have felt that way one time or another. Sometime in your life you have felt that way. Every Monday morning. <laughs> now I forgot where it was. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think anybody would say anything. Okay. Okay. But, but there's good news. I've got good news for you today. Because this same life that sometimes knocks us over, it takes the winds out of our sails, also offers us, listen, a second chance. Isn't that wonderful? Sometimes we need a second chance. And as some of us sitting in here need a second chance. And I'm going to tell you today, it's time to take that second chance and to, and to turn that page and move on uh, to, the, to the next chapter. Uh, all we, we have to do is believe and have hope and listen, receive it today, your second chance. Now, everybody in here, I was going to ask you to stay in, but I know Free Will Baptists don't like staying long. So I'm just going to ask you, how many of you in here? Has ever had a second chance? Okay, now hope, if you can keep your arms up, <laughs> go with me and I'll hurry, okay? Okay, we're all in here, right? Now, you can put your hand down. I was going to ask you, don't stand up. You can put your hand down. When I reach your number that you have had a second chance and you don't need any more, put your hand down. I don't know that I can hold mine up that long. Here we go. How about five? How about ten? A hundred, two hundred, two fifty, three, 
I'm going to stop there. So waste of time. Okay, put you in. In other words, we've needed a lot of second chances in our lives. So, and um, today that's what I'm going to talk about is, uh, well, I guess really the title is What's the Chance? But it is on uh, having a second chance. We're going to learn today how, how change works in our lives and, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. And, and now, don't don't cut me off after I say this, because you, you may not like it. But uh, works in our life is this word called chance. I'm going to show you something today I've never seen before. And it's talk. And I'm not talking about luck. Now I don't believe in luck. But I want you to listen to this word about chance. We're going to look at the word chance, and I'm going to tell you the Hebrew meaning of chance that was used in the Bible, in the Old, time, Old Testament times, the Hebrew. And I'm going to show you what that says. We're going to look at a few people that had a second chance, and we're going to look at how ch a chance sometimes plays a part in our lives. So the title is, What's the Chance? Now, Ecclesiastes 9.11 is where I found this. And I just, I'm just going to read it. And y'all just listen to what it says. Ecclesiastes 9.11, the Bible reads, Nor bread to the wise, nor riches to me of understanding, nor favor of man of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. Now, let's let that sink in. So now I'm going to get into this part with chance. I hope I can do this. Y'all ready? Um, do you think chance plays a part in your life? Not luck, but chance. I do. And I'm going to show you something now. Or is it just, or, in, or in, is it something special? I read Ecclesiastes 9, but here's what I want to show you. Chance is only, is the word used... When they in the uh, in the Old Testament or in the Bible, chance was used for the knowledge as to the way in which one event falls in with another. You know, it's like this: you, you, things happen. Whatever happens here, then it moves on to this, 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 this. It's a chance, but the chance meaning. Now I'm gonna just read this: the true meaning of chance in the Bible. Now get this. It, the Hebrew word for chance, and I can't say it. I tried to get uh, somebody to tell me how to say it, and they didn't either. But it's it's like pega corne. That's the Hebrew now. I don't know no Hebrew, so don't don't go down there. But together, those two words together present a picture not of random occurrences, but right happenings that are dependent on the Lord's orchestration. Got that? And, and see, this, and it's unfortunate, now listen, it's unfortunate that when they took that word in the Old Testament or in just in the Bible, that's only founded in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, and they took that as it really being led by God, but when the English, when we, when the English took it and they translated it in English, the only word they could come up with for the word I said in Hebrew was chance. Y'all get that? So chance is not a bad word if it's used in the Bible. Oh, Lord, I know he knows. In the Bible, uh, it's, not, it's not a bad word because it means being led by God. And God is in control and he directs the circumstances that come our way. So really, using the word chance is not a bad word if you're meaning it the way they meant it. But we as English, we took it and we translated the, the Hebrew to chance. I never heard that. Okay. Um, and I got, you, I got an example for you in the Bible where this happens. And I'm just going to tell the story. It's, and you need to read it. It's 1 Samuel 6, 6 through 9. You ready? This is, this is the story that I got it from. Uh, the Israelites and the Philistines had been fighting. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant. 
and they put it in the place where their God stayed. You know, they, they had a, a, maybe a temple or something, and they put it in there. And every day that they would go back over and go in there to pray or what to their gods, their gods would be fell on the floor. And they said, well, what in the world? You know? So they picked them up, put them back up there, and went on home. It'd be like us coming in here and all this stuff was laying on the floor, you know, all the crosses and everything. So the next day they go in there to, to pray and to whatever, and their God is on the floor. They pick him back up and they put him back up there. So they got, got thinking, there's a problem here. Now, uh, are we cursed? Is God cursing us? Or is, is because we got the covenant in here, is there something wrong with us? And so they made up a plan to see if it was God that was cursing them or it was just their gods. So you ready? Here's what they did. So they come up with this plan to see, God, to see what God would do. So they built a wagon. They hooked, they hooked two cows to it. And they put the Ark of the Covenant in there. And then they put uh, in that, in that, around that covenant, uh, uh, some gold and silver for sacrifice, just in case, you know, just in case. It wasn't God. And here's what they did. I thought this was so interesting. They took this wagon and these two uh, cows and they put them and they, they, they didn't have anybody guiding it. They said, we're going to let them go. And wherever they go... That's what, that's what we're going to see. If they go to Joshua and they go over here, we're going to say that's God's plan. But if they just go and they go, go off somewhere, we're going to just say it's just our plan. So they were asking God to, to show them. Well, all they did is they probably hit the, go, the, the cows and they started off. Now, y'all, tell me God ain't in control with your chances or your circumstances, or the things that happen in your life. You know where them two, them two cows pull that covenant to? Joshua. It said the rock. They carried it to the rock. And we know the rock is Jesus or God. And they knew where they were. Them animals knew where they were going. Now, who? Y'all getting this? Who directed them cows to go to where Joshua was? God. But see, to these people who, who believed in chance and circumstances and luck or whatever, they took it as a sign that God was in this and God took care of it and he was in control. That's what they call a chance. But it was really what God directed. Isn't that great? You know, you start out and you don't know where you're going and he'll direct you. I've had that happen. How about y'all? And I wonder how in the world did I end up here? <laughs> we won't go into details on that. But uh, so see, he had a plan, and he used his people. Read it this afternoon. Read, read um, Samuel, First uh, Samuel six, that whole chapter, and I, it'll it'll tell you what I just told you. Now I'm here to tell you, y'all. Listen. Okay. I got to hear more than that. All right. I forgot what I was going to tell them. <laughs> Here to come to me. Oh, that God can use anything. If he can use two cows with the, uh, the, the, uh, and the wagon, and they just head out and end up where God wanted them to end up, he's in control with your chance with your coincidences that happen to you. And I'm not talking about luck. Don't say about luck. I'm not using that word. I'm using the word that the Old Testament people used to mean the same thing that our English word means. Ain't that good? You ain't just here by coincidence. God has got you here for a reason. Amen? I'm telling you, God is in control of your life. If he can lead two cows, I don't know nothing about cows. Y'all might know a lot about cows. I don't know nothing about cows. But if he can take, 
and lead them to where he wants them to. Can he not lead us in our lives and show us if we would be as obedient as them two cows? He could do something with us. Isn't that wonderful? Now, don't y'all forget that. Chance is not too bad. In the English, we accept it a different way than they did in the Bible. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Isn't that story wonderful? I've never seen the story. <laughs> I've never seen the story until I looked up Chance. Okay. People in the Bible were not different than us. They needed second chances. We all fail. We all have lapses. We all make bad choices. We need another chance to do and be what God wants us to be. Now, I'm going to look at a few people from the Bible. <laughs> so he's okay. Oh, I thought she was talking to me. Okay. <laughs> the first person I got is Jonah. Y'all know the story. Jonah. Everybody know the story of Jonah? He was a prophet. The God told him to, uh, to go to Nineveh, and he says, I'm not going. Hey, it's sweet. I'm going with her. <laughs> That's sweet. Jonah says, I'm not going. And God said, okay. But I'm not going through that story. You've heard it all your life. God, Jonah did go, didn't he? He got there, didn't he? Yep. And how did he get there? <laughs> In the belly of a boy. <laughs> I, I, y'all, listen to me. And when God tells y'all something like that, y'all better do it. I don't know how he'll get you there, but he will get you there somehow if that's where he wants you. But God told, uh, God told Jonah after he finally turned around and he went where he was supposed to go and he was doing what God asked him to do, he gave him that second chance. He said, I'm going to give you a second chance. And we're still talking about Jonah. If, he hadn't, uh, if, if God hadn't given him a second chance, we would have never heard of Jonah. Okay, David, very quickly. He was a shepherd. He defeated Goliath. He was a man after God's own heart. But... He messed up one time. And that's all you hear people talk about sometimes is when he messed up. But God forgave him. Uh, Nathan came and confronted him, and he, and he asked for forgiveness. And God made him a what? A king. And what come out of uh, David? Jesus. He gave him a second chance. And old Peter, you know Peter. I relate to Peter. I do. He was called by Jesus, disciple. He told Jesus in the upper room, I'd die for you. I'd never deny you. Never. I would even die for you. And it won't much later when he what? And you know what Peter didn't say it? I'm going fishing. I've had enough. I'm leaving this mess. I'm going fishing. He's out there fishing. He sees the light up at the uh, front of uh, at the uh, shore, and it looks like somebody's cooking something. He sees a figure, and he gets up there closer, and he's, you know what he says? It's the Lord. Give him a second chance to see him. And then Peter become one of the uh, greatest preachers uh, ever, I guess. Uh, the woman at the well, you all know her story. She was a Samaritan, been married five times. Uh, she was an outcast, but here comes her second chance. She meets Jesus at the well. He gives her living water. She accepts it. She knows. She drops her, her, her uh, water pail. She don't even pick it back up to go to the city. And she goes and, sh and all the Samaritans listen to her. And they all say, a bunch of them are saved. And we're still talking about her today. God give her a second chance. Ain't that great? Listen, tell your children, that's a second chance. Or people that you know that are going through things and, and you think, oh, I would never, whatever. Just say, God will give you a second chance. Don't quit. Keep going. And then, of course, Ruth. I love Ruth. And you all know her story. She was a Moabite, but, boy, she, she, she followed that uh, mother-in-law. And if she hadn't followed that mother-in-law, she would have never met that, ain't that a beautiful love story? 
I've seen it on TV. He was so good looking. <laughs> he was he was pretty. Wasn't he pretty? Y'all may have seen it. Y'all may didn't see the one I saw. I'm not sure. <laughs> but isn't that a wonderful love story of how, and, and she's out there gleaming, and he says, leave, I love that part, leave her a little extra so she can get, get a little bit more. And, uh, and then they fell in love. And what you know, the end of the story. They have a, a son, and his name is. I didn't turn my paper. What is it? Obed. And then uh, Jesse, and then here comes David out of this lineage, and then who comes out of that? Jesus. See, his story runs through everything, don't it? From the story we read today, there's God. And from all these people that we, we talked about, there's Jesus. And, and his story just runs through the, whole, through the whole Bible. And as I said yesterday, I love to tell the story, the story of Jesus. Now, I'm going to end with this, and um, we're going to see. Okay, I hope I can read. I, I guess y'all think I look at a lot of TV, but I, I really don't. But have you ever seen Alice in Wonderland? I bet them little girls have back there. Alice in Wonderland? Okay. This is a scene from it. Uh, the scene was when Alice is walking through the, th through the forest in the dark, and she comes to a fork in the road. You ever been there? I always think of it, uh, I think, weird anyway, of... Uh, Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> and when I've seen that twice this week. So I'm, I'm desperate if I'm watching uh, whatever. But uh, it was follow the yellow And she gets to a, there's like three yellow brick roads. And she don't want to know where to go. And she says, well, which one do I take? And, of course, there's the scarecrow. I ain't getting in all that. Oh, I got, let me get back to the Alice in Wonderland. Uh, she doesn't know which path to take. As she stands there contemplating her next move, should she take a chance? The Cheshire, I can't never say that word, but a cat. I'm going to point to you and you say it. i got to say it one more time, okay? Okay, hold on that. Uh, magically appears. She politely asked him, which is the way? I put Mr. Cat because I can't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it says, she, he says, well, where do you want to go? He, she says, I don't know. And Alice answered, uh, then, then said the cat, Alice answered, I don't know where I want to go. And the cat said, it doesn't matter. Any road will take you there. You got to know where you're going and put in there. Take a chance. Y'all, take a chance. The, come on. Okay. Had a she had a very good point. <laughs> he was playfully saying, tell me where you want to go. Otherwise, I'll tell you where to go. Now, listen, y'all. Every day is a new chance for us. If we don't decide for ourselves, people and life will decide for us. You got to know where you're going. Sometimes we have to take a chance. But don't leave it in anybody's hands. And now I'm going to close with this. Chance. For some reason, out of the blue, unexpectedly, but it can be a God thing. Your chance can be a God thing. I don't know what it is, but it could be. Now, here's what I want us to do for ourselves. I told you about the people. I've told you the story. I've told you what chance meant back then. Now, this is for us. Now, please get this. If you get a second chance or an opportunity, take it. If it can change your life, let it. But leave no place, and I, I, I got to really think on this one, leave no place for regrets. Y'all got that? You got, you got that? If you get a second chance at something, take it. You never know. What might be down the road? That, that may be your wagon and your mule or whatever, them cows or whatever they had. Never pass up the chance. Now, this is good. This is from my heart, I'm going to tell y'all. Never pass up the chance to say, I love you. And I heard this song. It's not a Christian song, and y'all may not like it. I don't care. 
I like it. It says, if tomorrow never comes, will they know how much I love them? Tell them how much you love each other because you may not have tomorrow. Say, I'm sorry. Those are two, those two words that are the hardest to say. But see, I'm, I'm, I got through this. But since I've been working for Chick-fil-A, I don't have no problem saying that. I'm sorry. Because these young people don't care. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. Okay, it don't matter. It's all right. We got no. Thank you. <laughs> You're such a good friend. These are things to say now. Don't wait to say them when, you don't have the, when they're not there. And uh, uh, now here's the, here's the big one. Y'all ready? I was hoping Jody was here, but he's not here. <laughs> Tell him. Oh, he'll probably watch it or whatever. But it's a chance to shut up. It's not that I thought of him first, but I, I know he would have liked that. Okay, uh, it's a chance to do all those wonderful things. Do those. But there's also a, a time and a chance to shut up, to speak up, and to stand up. And we've had that opportunity this past week as far as voting. It's time for us Christians to stand up and take a stand and do what we can do. We can't do it all, but we can do our part. And then we got let God do the rest. Isn't that right? And I love that thing Monday night. I think we need to all be on our, our knees praying Monday night. I forgot what time you see it. Six o'clock. Pray. Okay. Now, now I'm ending. Time passes quickly. We don't even notice it until it begins to show. So don't wait to use. Oh, this is good. Don't wait to use. I, I do this. All, I have done it. I don't do it anymore because I don't have any, so it don't matter. Uh, so don't wait to use the good china. Take it out. My china is plastic. It's those china plates that you throw away. That's my china. But if you got good china, take that sucker out and use it sometime. Uh, go on that trip. Eat that cake, girls. <laughs> Wear that dress. And buy them shoes. Yes, yes. Go fishing. <laughs> take a take a take a person fishing. I went. Oh, I, got time. I went fishing. I went fishing two weeks ago. My son and I, all of us went to the beach. Uh, I won't get into all that, but we we took some time off, and uh, I went fishing, and I caught a flounder, and two little pinfish together, and I thought I had me a monster. <laughs> Go fishing. That was the most relaxing time of, I've had. It was, isn't it wonderful? You don't need, you just, just pulling in, you think you got a monster on there, and it's a little old, he was about like this, you know. Okay, take a chance in life. This, uh, the time is now. Live with passion. Tomorrow is never promised to anyone. And thank God that we serve a God of second chances. Say it. Second chances. Ain't that wonderful? Now we're going to end it with the uh, the closing song is, and she's going to take care of that. Um, I'm going to just be honest with you while she's getting ready. This was really heart searching for me. But I said I just wanted to share it with, with y'all because I love y'all and I know we all in this together. Now, and, and we all need to know, and all the, uh, we need to share that, that there, we serve a God of second chances. So, we're going to end it that way. Forsaken 
He thought there was no hope at all. Christ the Lord remembered him and restored his faith again. God is a God of a second chance. God is a God of a second chance. Oh, yes, he is. God is a God of sweet deliverance. And though you may have failed him, he knows just where you've been. God is a God of a second chance. You feel defeated by wrongful consequence. Do you feel overtaken by sinful circumstance? Well, you can be forgiven, the Savior, He understands. God is a God of a second. Now listen to this. Satan comes a knocking, tempting you to fall. Is he always pushing? He's got your back against the wall. God is a God of a second chance. We thank you, Jesus. God is a God of sweet deliverance. And though you may have failed Him, He knows just where. God is a God of a second chance. Yes, Though so you may have failed him, he knows just the way you've been. God is a God of a second chance. Of a second chance. Today's service has been about second chances, and I think we've all had those many, many times over and over. And we need to go out these doors today and understand we can't go no farther from Him. Because he's going to be with us each and every day. So, our benediction, I um, encourage you to come tonight. Any other time during the week, Bible studies at 7. <clears throat> Choir practice is at 8. We will take all new members. Um, we had a couple this past week. Once you join, you don't unjoin. Um, <laughs> we will. Um, we got a few more rooms up here on the podium to put some more chairs. And that will be okay too. But appreciate you guys being here tonight today. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time, the opportunity, and just the, the privilege to be here today to learn more about you through our Sunday school hour and just grab the message that Miss Linda gave us today, that we are here and you are a God of second chances as they sang on the video. Be with each one of us as we go to our respective homes and abiding places and give us just the comfort and the love that you so richly give us each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.